Today on MarcusNews.com, what's an amazing way to filter water in an emergency? The answers will surprise you. Why chlorine isn't even that effective at killing germs? What's the best filtration system for your home? You'll learn over a dozen simple, easy ways to make safe drinking water. What works and doesn't work might shock you. Today's guest is medical expert James Sloan. Let's say society collapses and the watering system shuts down. What do you do to get clean drinking water? What's the best way to sterilize? water or to make it drinkable? Well, actually, a real super simple way to do it is if you have like a little garden space, grow some horseradish and keep some horseradish on hand. And they found that if they took horseradish and ground it up and they put it in raw sewage, and they let it sit for about 45 minutes that the water was drinkable because all the oils in there would kill off any pathogens in the water. Really? And then the rest of it, the uh, horseradish would precipitate out all the solids to the bottom. And so what was left behind was pure water. Wow, I've never heard that. Yeah. So how much do you need to make it work? Like let's say for a gallon of water. I'd put maybe about a cup of uh, crushed horseradish in there. Now you're talking fresh or ground up powder? Or? Preferably fresh, but you know, if, if you don't have fresh, you know, keep a bag, you know. Just mush it up and stick it in there. Yeah, keep it tightly sealed, maybe you know, freezer or something like that. Some hydrogen peroxide or anything like that? Or? Yeah, peroxide's good. Even iodine can work. You can get iodine crystals. All right, so, so let's say, let's take the gallon of water. Mm -hmm. uh, how much hydrogen peroxide would you put in a gallon of water to make it drinkable? What concentration of peroxide? Well, let's say that cheap 99 cent stuff. Okay, that's 3% peroxide peroxide, so for a gallon of water, I would do probably about a third of a cup. So you, you put it in there and then instantly it's drinkable? I, I would say instantly, give it a little time. Like, you want, like 10 minutes, half hour? Um, I'd give it at least a good hour or two, just because peroxide is not going to be quite as strong, so I would, you know, especially at 3%, and then you're diluting it beyond that. What about people that say you put some bleach in the water? They used to do that. Yeah. Bleach will work in, in a pinch. It's not my first choice, so but like what a spoonful of bleach in a gallon of water. Um, well, you got to remember there's different strengths of bleach too. If you get the generic stuff, you're gonna need more than if you get like a really good quality bleach. So there's gonna be a little bit difference there. But if um, let's say if you got Clorox, because that's a, you know a good brand and stuff, concentrated. So if you were to use Clorox, uh, I put a couple tablespoons to a gallon of water, and again let it sit for at least a couple hours to. Because actually chlorine is not that great of a, a disinfectant like people think it is. There's been a lot of studies on that found that chlorine does not kill all pathogens for one. And even I found a study from the 19, I think it was 50 something um, Journal of Public Health, I believe it was, and they had an article in there and they were talking about cases of hepatitis transmitted through drinking water. And out of all the cases they had in this one particular year, which was like 190,000 or something like that, Nearly all the cases, all I think except like 10% of the cases, were from chlorinated drinking water. So the chlorine was not that effective. And they also found that in the case of if there's uh, feces present, that it prevents chlorine from breaking down things like poliovirus. Well, of course, they're, you know, when they're treating the water at the treatment plants, if they're using chlorine and there's feces present, it's not going to do anything. So chlorine isn't exactly my first choice as far as you know, doing water. but in a pinch because if, if the world does go to hell or whatever, you don't have electricity, so right. ozone's out. Unfortunately, because ozone would have been our first choice. Uh, okay, yeah. But with but no... Everybody, not everybody has an ozone machine. Yeah, or a generator to run it, right, too. Right, so. Right. so what about uh, just boiling water? Um, if you have a source of heat, again, if, if everything... Okay, let's say you got some matches, you rub sticks together, whatever. Okay, yeah. yeah, as long as you have a fire, yeah, boiling water, you want to boil it for at least a good 15 minutes. But again, if you know everything, you know the world comes to an end or whatever. How many people know how to start a fire? <laughs> you can't run to your stove. Your stove's not going to work. The power grid's going to go down. The right. gas system's going to be right. down. So, what would you personally do? Um, well, I said my first choice would still probably be the horseradish if I have it handy. If not, there's herbs out here that I know that are well antiseptic. You know, chaparral we have everywhere out here. Mm -hmm. Very, very good antiseptic. Uh, the yucca out here would be very good. So how would you do that? Because uh, would you just put fresh plant in the, in the water? Yeah, mix it. Yeah, try to uh, either dry it or, uh, or freeze it or crush it. You know, every depending on what time of year. If you got freezing temperatures, let it freeze first, because that cracks the cell walls, makes it a little bit easier to use or dry it out. Well, let's say there's no electricity. Let's say society collapses. Would you bang it with a hammer until it's crushed? Yeah, you can smash it. Yeah, that works too. Yes, yeah, okay. with a rock and okay. yeah, and you smash it really good. So you want surface area, and then you mix it in there, shake it up really good, and then again let it sit for a while. Uh, the water's going to taste kind of nasty with some of those herbs, you know, like yucca chaparral definitely tastes nasty, but... Let's say uh, 
there is some money in society left. What's the best filtration system for people if they can't get spring water? Because spring water is obviously the best choice, but let's say they have to filter their water and that's all they have. Still sterilize it with ozone would be my first choice. Well, let's say normal person. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Means everybody who's had those on you is had normal. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see, there's always zeolites are a good way. I don't believe in ingesting zeolites. They are aluminum silicates, so I'm not big on ingesting them, but I have used them to filter water before, and it's extremely effective at filtering water. Um, actually, better than carbon, because a lot of people go with you know activated carbon, but they don't realize activated carbon gets plugged up like that. It's you know, it works for like a week and that's it. Yeah, it doesn't last very long. Zeolites are extremely effective though. They have that same high surface area. If you look under a microscope, they're like millions of little pores in high surface area. Are there zeolite filtration systems? Not that I've seen, except for we use them in our aquariums because ammonia remover for aquariums. Right, but, but how do you filter drinking water? How do you get like water for the house with, with zeolites? Oh, I don't know about the whole house, but if you're doing for like, you know, again, you have you know, emergency where you need pure water and you don't have a source to purify it otherwise, you put the zeolites in the water. And I usually let it sit for like three days and it sucks everything right out of the water. Is it like a powder, little rocks or something? Yeah, they look like little rocks. Yeah, see what the aquarium stores. So what do you think of RO systems? Or? Um, RO systems are good, it provided you add the minerals back to the water. I actually prefer RO to the distillation. A lot of people sit there and say distillation is far superior to RO, and that's not true. Distillation, one of the problems you run into is that you have volatile organics that get distilled out with the water. That's why if you go to like a laboratory, they don't use just single distilled water. They triple distill it because they have to keep getting all those other impurities back out. And so if you have something like benzene or some type of solvent like that, it's going to come right out with the water and go into your water. So all you're getting rid of is maybe the uh, microbes, you're getting rid of some of the minerals and stuff, but you're not getting rid of a lot of the toxins. Plus a lot of distillers, the, what they say are really healthy. The good ones, they're made with st stainless steel. Stainless steel has nickel in it, which is a heavy metal. And the, 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 doesn't the distilled water suck that into the water? Well, the more pure water is, the more solvent it becomes. And so if you have a high enough purity in the water, it can start leaching whatever it's in. Right. So um, plastic, the nickel from the stainless steel. Yeah, well, even if you get pure enough water, you can eat glass. Really? Uh, yeah, my dad uh, was working at a lab up in Reno, and they do what they call type 1 water, which is ultra-pure water. Now, it's so pure, they don't measure by parts per million of impurities like they do with uh, distilled. They actually measure by electrical resistance. So when you hit 18 megohm, it's considered ultra-pure. Well, they were producing 22 megohm water, so this stuff was so pure, it was highly corrosive. So when you pour it into a glass, it starts eating the glass. <laughs> corrosive water, that is yeah. wild. So how do, well, what do they store it in? Uh, well, it's used strictly for like laboratory purposes, so it's used up immediately. Cause in order oh, you to, can it, use it the minute you create it. Yeah, they even, it's in a, a loop where it's continuously being re-purified because, again, water's a universal solvent. Right. So it just starts sucking up gases from the air and it'll start eating away at stuff. So they have to continually circulate it until it's ready for use and it's like right into whatever they're, they're using it for. <laughs> so. Anything else for water? Well, I say the you know, trick is just iodine crystals. You get iodine crystals down at a pharmacy or whatever and you put the iodine crystals into the water. In fact, it's with the old water purification kits. So if you go camping and stuff, a lot of them were simply just little iodine crystals and you'd pour them in your water and you let them sit for a while and the iodine kills the pathogens. Mm, and it works? Oh yeah. That's something that doesn't go bad. It's you know elemental, so you can keep it for years and years and years, and it won't go bad on you. Unlike you know bleach, it takes up a lot less room because you know, got this little bottle of crystals as opposed to this big gallon jug of you know bleach. When you put bleach in water to sterilize it, and you're drinking it, doesn't the bleach kill stuff in your body? Um, if you let the bleach sit for a while, you're going to end up using a lot of the bleach up with you know destroying whatever's in the water in the first place. But again, it's not the, the primary choice anyways. A lot of right. pathogens will survive the bleach. But if you heat the water, the bleach will dissipate. Mm -hmm. Or you can just leave the container open. Uh, we dechlorinate water for aquariums all the time. I just, you know, because tap water, of course, has chlorine. I just let the water sit. Uh, if it's a gallon, I let it sit overnight. Five gallon, I let it sit for like a week or whatever. And the chlorine dissipates out of the water anyways. So heat and time gets rid of the chlorine mm -hmm. in the water. Light will destroy chlorine. So if you... You know, have a glass container, you can stick it out. In fact, sunlight's a great, that's what I didn't think about, is sunlight's a great disinfectant. Yeah. So if you have a glass jar, you don't want plastic because the plastic will leach in the sun, but right. if you have a glass jar, you can put your water in there and put it out in the sun for a while. Right. And Well, they have UV uh, filters. Mm -hmm, exactly. Which is the best filter system you can get is UV, right? Other yeah. Than ozone. Yeah, those will end up killing the pathogens as well. And the sun is UV, mm -hmm. that's great. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> for more great information, videos, recipes, 
stories and tips, be sure you're signed up at marcusnews.com. The James Sloan Posting Board is at medcapsules.com. To learn more about the many uses of the wild plants in your area, get your copy of the Free Food and Medicine Worldwide Edible Plant Guide at healanything.com. 